Merry Christmas. Welcome to Birmingham Unitarian Church. For those of you who are joining us online tonight, we are a Unitarian Universalist congregation located in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. I'm Reverend Mandy. I'm so happy that everybody is here tonight. I wanna to let you know that at our church, religious education is really, really important to us. We have classes for young people every Sunday morning, well, most Sunday mornings at 1030 during the service. Um, but for the months of January and February, we're gonna take a break from being on site. So we will have classes available online and you can find those by visiting our website. So as a reminder, our service is being live streamed. If you have privacy concerns, those back couple of rows there don't show up on the cameras. And also, it's really important that we keep our masks on. Everybody needs to have your mask up above your nose the whole time that we're up here. Okay, our Director of Religious Education is Nico Van Ostrand. We'll start our service now with a special message from Nico. Today, as I have for the past few months, I invite you to take in the time for all ages from your seat, be that at home or in the BUC sanctuary. This is one of the ways we balance Zoom accessibility with in-person privacy. Wherever you are today, take a breath. Imagine for a moment, whatever words, images, or feelings come to mind when I say community. Community is the core of religious education. As you use and as a congregation, we are fortunate to be members of a multi-generational community made up of children, youth, adults, and elders, a beautiful mix of all ages that is a pretty rare phenomenon for most of us. While we do have religious education classes that are specific for children and youth, they are not off just sitting around while the grown-ups do grown-up UU stuff. In religious education classes, we build community through storytelling, ritual, learning how to share our joys and sorrows and how to hold the joys and sorrows of others. We take action for social justice. We talk about and even plan worship services. Does this description of what happens in religious education sound familiar to those of you whose religious exploration happens primarily in worship? My point is that we are a community together. We are all exploring what it means to be you, you, and there is no way to approach this question except together. So I ask you again to imagine for a moment those words, images, or feelings that rise up when I say, community. And I leave you, community members of all ages, with an invitation to seek out ways this week to share your sense of community with others. It's Christmas Eve and time for Christmas carols, so let's start with Angels We Have Heard on High.
many, uh, it's common in uh, Unitarian Universalist uh, worship services to have a chalice lighting. This is a symbol of our free religious faith. Tonight we lay our chalice as a beacon of hope on this cold winter's day, night. This flame is a reminder of the warmth of community and the promise of new life unfolding. Please join us in the next carol, Go Tell It on the Mountain. The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to create a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. On Sunday mornings, we take up a collection to support our mission. We usually give away half of the money that we collect to nonprofit organizations that share our values. Tonight is special, though. The money that we collect tonight will will be used for only our church and programs, like religious education. Providing financial support is a way that you can be part of the life and of our, our church and help us build the world we dream about, a world where everybody is loved and treated with fairness. So let there be an offering in support of this beloved community and our works, and our good works. <laughs> Okay, who's ready to hear a story? Okay, at least five of you, good. You're going to have to wake up a little bit. This one involves participation. 
Oh. So have you ever heard the story about how Jesus was born in a stable? A stable is a type of barn where animals live. It is not a very nice place for a baby to be born, but that's what people say happened. We're about to hear a story about the birth of Jesus, but this is a story that tells about the animals that were in the barn too. They were just as surprised as anyone to see a baby born in a stable. Like I said, I'm gonna need some help in telling the story from everyone, everyone here in the building. For those of you watching at home, you're just gonna to have to be super loud so that we can hear you too. Everybody knows that stories are better, better when they have animal noises, right? <laughs> Every story. So let's practice making a couple of noises now. I'm gonna let you know what noise to make. So first, let's try a donkey. Very good, very good. What about a sheep? Oh, yes, we're, we're very confident with our sheep. How about a dove? Good, okay, now this is the easy one, a cow. Yes, we got that. Okay, so, but there's one more step to this because the animals are not always happy in the story. Sometimes they're grumpy. So how does a grumpy donkey sound? And grumpy sheep? Okay, all right, I think you got it. So let's get started, okay? So like I said, this time of year, see a lot of pictures of Jesus being born in a stable, surrounded by animals. But have you ever heard the story of what happened in the stable before Jesus was born? Before they got to the stable, Mary and Joseph had to travel from where they lived, a town called Nazareth, to another town called Bethlehem. They had to walk for about a whole week to get there. And Mary was super pregnant, so she had to ride a donkey because it was too far for her to walk. So it was a happy donkey. <laughs> and Joseph walked. The road was dusty, many hills to climb. It was very difficult, and it was just a very hard time. When Mary and Joseph and the donkey arrived at Bethlehem, they were all very tired, but there was no place for them to stay. All the rooms at the end were taken, and because Mary was about to have her baby, they needed to find a place, quick. And an innkeeper felt bad for them, so he offered to let them stay in the stable. It was the only place that there was. There were many, many kinds of animals in the stable. There were cows and sheep and doves and some super, super loud donkeys. Yep. And when the animals heard that there were going to be people in the stable, they grumbled. They were now grumpy cows. Mm -hmm. And there was one cow in particular who was known to be stubborn and she was the grumpiest of all of them. And she just knew that those people were going to make changes in her routine and just mess everything up. And the donkeys were grumpy too. I don't think those donkeys are allowed. Grumpy donkeys, let's hear it. There we go. The donkeys did not want to spend any more time with people because people made them work so hard. And the sheep were grumpy. Yes, they were worried that the people were going to eat all of their food, and that's probably why they were grumpy. They were hangry. And then there was the dove, and she was the grumpiest of all, which is saying a lot because doves are famous for being peaceful. She was a super grumpy dove. Yeah, she knew that humans were noisy and they were dangerous, and she was not having it. And together, the animals decided that there was no room. There was just no room in the stable. They weren't going to have it. And all of them, all of the animals complained very loudly. All of them. Yeah, they were mad. They were super mad. And there was so much noise that the innkeeper rushed out to see what was wrong. And when the innkeeper opened the door, something happened. A light came in from a star, a very bright star. And it shone through the doorway. And it lit up a corner of the stable where that super grumpy cow was. And that cow felt her heart grow warm. And she became a peaceful cow. And she peacefully moved. Mm -hmm. Yep. And she told the other animals that she had changed her mind and that they should help the humans after all. And then the animals heard the sound of distant singing. But it wasn't human music. It was angel music. And the donkey that had carried Mary all the way 
realized that he was being too grumpy and he changed his mind too and he became a peaceful doggy. And you know that sheep are followers and so the sheep decided to agree too and they became peaceful sheep. And that super grumpy dove, well, she decided that if everybody else could get over it, then so should she. And she became a peaceful dove. And the complaining settled down and they became peaceful, happy animals. And the young woman and her husband walked in. The animals were surprised to see how tired and how gentle they were. As the animals often do, they sensed that these were good people. They weren't going to hurt them. The animals moved back a little bit and they made room for them in the corner where the hay was nice and fresh and the stable grew very quiet. It was that night in the stable that Mary gave birth to her firstborn son and she named him Jesus. The animals were surprised to see how very much like their own babies he was. He was tiny and vulnerable. And then their hearts were moved to love and generosity and they gave him gifts. The cow who had been the most concerned about the people gave him her manger for his bed. That's where the food is. And the sheep gave him wool for a blanket. And the donkey's gift was that he was quiet, which is rare for a donkey and that took a lot of effort. And that one super grumpy dove actually sang him to sleep. And those were the first Christmas gifts given by animals in the stable for the baby Jesus. And so at Christmas time, when we receive gifts from people who love us, remember that cold, dark night when the animals learn to open up their hearts. And right there, in a place that wasn't special at all, something very special happened. When they opened their hearts, those animals were forever changed. Love changed them and changed the whole world, and it can change us too. We're going to sing a special song about those animals now. I invite you to rise as you're willing and able. sure that we all heard that story so I'm going to say just a little bit about it. Tonight we learned about the unfriendly beasts. We learned that the animals were not excited to share their stable with Mary and Joseph and the cow was most upset because she knew that humans were going to change the routine. The doves were afraid 
the donkeys were resentful and they were tired of working and the sheep who are always hungry were worried that there just wasn't going to be enough for them. These are some of the same reasons that humans don't like to do new things. Like the cow, we want things to be predictable. Like the doves, we can be distrusting. We can definitely be resentful. And like the sheep, we sometimes have a hard time sharing. But something changed for those animals. They realized that something special was about to happen and they wanted to be a part of it. In that ordinary stable, the most ordinary of nights, something extraordinary happened because they were willing to let go of their plans. They were willing to let go of their expectations for how life was supposed to be. They simply just opened their hearts to joy and to love. And that's, that's all it took, just opening their hearts and love did the rest. And I like to think that that's possible for us too, this year especially. We have another carol now. You can rise as you're willing and able. You can also sit down if you don't want to. Please join in the first Noel. Lighting candles is a very important Christmas tradition. We light candles as a reminder that love can change us and that there is always hope. There are both real candles and plastic candles for you to light tonight. As a family, you can light a real candle. <laughs> I'll let you decide who gets to hold it, but I'm gonna just encourage you that that would be an adult or an older kid. Uh, and then everybody will be welcome to take a plastic candle back to your seat with you. And for those of you who are joining us on Zoom tonight, I invite you to light a candle at home or perhaps just bring to mind a light in your heart. As you come up, I invite you to also say to me, but really more to each other, something that you can do to spread love in the world. I invite you to come forward now and we'll sing Silent Night once we all get back to our seats and we're gonna stand on that last verse of Silent Night and it's gonna feel exciting and great.
go out into this world tonight, take with you some of the hope and the joy that you found here. You may you be held in love, may be kept in peace, and may you also have a very Merry Christmas. Yes.